Markets spiked the moment the hike was announced. They plateaued, and then they started climbing higher and higher. And now, post Janet Yellen's news conference, they are holding most of these gains here. The Dow, as I said, up 110, but we're watching it very closely. S&P up 20. NASDAQ up 45 because Yellen said that she sees the economy improving at a modest rate. Well, that's not new. Inflation is near its 2% target. That's not new. And as you look at all that's happening here, we are just, uh, you know, 52, 55 points away from Dow 21,000 right now. But the victims here, and there are victims, let's get to the U.S. dollar, Treasury yields as well. The dollar immediately plummeted to a two-week low against the basket that we call, you know, the dollar index. Look at this intraday picture. It is very weak at the moment. And then it was, a, I think, like a two-week low against the yen, one-week low against the euro. Either way, if the Fed is following the right path or just slow-poking it along as the economy heats up, what's the right way to do this? The 10-year yields plummeting seven basis points. That means that people are pretty bullish about stocks and less worried and less in intending to go into safe havens. Let's get right to our Fed insider, Jeffrey's Ward McCarthy and PNC's $130 billion man, Bill Stone. Ward, to you first, did a small part of you kind of expect that Janet Yellen might have been a little more hawkish in light of, you know, what we've really had, strong economic data that we've gotten lately? Well, I think what was good today was that Janet Yellen was optimistic. I mean, basically, the Fed is raising rates because they have confidence in the economy, and they also feel as if they can take a victory lap because they've finally got an inflation back up where uh, they want it to be. So uh, I think what we should look to, at today as is being something uh, of an indication that uh, events are unfolding the way the Fed had wanted it to, and if that continues to be the case, then they're going to follow follow through and on yet, their but, uh, path of moderate rate hikes. And yet, and you know, we pulled one of these sound bites where she almost contradicted herself, but we'll get to that part second. And first, talk about why she said she wasn't upping the prediction of four rate hikes this year. Listen to what she said. Uh, okay, we don't have it just yet, but in essence, she, uh, well, we'll get it for you, but she said that, look, anything could happen, so policy is not set in stone. Three hikes, though, appear to be set in stone for the moment. So let me get to Bill Stone. Uh, she's concerned that some exogenous event might happen, which, of course, we know in this day and age is a real possibility. But do you feel the Fed's behind the curve? We got a 12-year high today on sentiment for home builders. We've gotten very strong data across the board. Uh, look, I think we had retail sales a little weaker today, but do they risk really being slowpokes on this? Well, I think the market's saying they're, they, they're at least playing it out just about right, because uh, I think that was the fear going in. You kind of headlined it where the worry was they were going to up it to four hikes, and I think that's where people thought you might see a market sell-off, including myself, uh, that they maybe got a little ahead of themselves. Uh, the good news is they're just kind of, I'll say, playing it down the middle and consistent with what I think is, uh, is you know, I'll say is the, the, the base case, and you never know which way you go. But, uh, you know, the one thing they did make clear in the statement is now we're very close to our inflation target. So it's no longer trying to get to our inflation target. It's kind of trying to hold it. Well, that's also where I saw a contradiction, uh, Ward. And you having been on the inside as a senior economist, um, I, I, I just, when I heard her say that, then all of a sudden she said, uh, yeah, but the core inflation rate, which excludes the often volatile uh, food and energy prices, um, well, that hasn't really moved. I mean, that's not our target um, inflation that we look at, but, but we're looking at it. So I, I'm just wondering why she is so incredibly cautious where others say we should have been raising rates long ago. Well, I think innately she is just cautious, uh, which is somewhat understandable given what the economy has gone through over the last 10 years. But the Fed tends to look at headline and core inflation for different things. Mm -hmm. uh, the specific target or inflation target that the Fed has is the headline PCE deflator. Uh, but it also tends to look at core inflation as an indication of where headline inflation is going. So if uh, core inflation is accelerating, uh, that's a pretty good indication that headline's going to accelerate as well. Right. The fact that the core has been somewhat stable suggests that Can I just we'll jump probably in get here? a little bit more uh, of an acceleration, but here. not much more. Let me just jump in here. We now have the latest Fed funds futures, the prediction for the next opportunity, which is June, 
48.5%, and we can flip it over to September, which I believe was even higher. That's a better expectation. As we continue to look at that, it's at 73.7. Uh, we do have that soundbite from her where she talked about how policy isn't intransigent. Let's listen to that, and then you can comment. Policy is not set in stone. It is data dependent, and we're we're not locked into any particular policy path. Um, our, you know, as you said, the data have not notably strengthened. I there's noise always in the data from quarter to quarter, but we haven't changed our view of the outlook. We think we're on the same path. The same path, and and she said. As you have said, well, one reporter said that the data wasn't good, but we've been looking at data that's improving, and we had the labor numbers coming out for the month of February. And, Bill, as I look at where to put my money at this point, and we can cycle through what's moving. We could look at banks. We can put all of these up on the screen and see what the S&P leaders are and the laggards, et cetera. What do you tell your clients right now? Yeah, so I think let's set aside, well, today, I'll say it's probably a good entry point into some things that we like um, because we're really positioned for higher rates and most, or I guess I'll say not most, everything pretty much rallied. Uh, but in terms of the outperformers today are really a lot of your interest rate sensitive. Uh, in other words, those that benefit from lower late rates like real estate, utilities. Uh, we like the financials because, again, we do think rates are going to go higher. And, and why I mean rates, I mean you know, longer term yields. Uh, you know, the bigger picture, I'd say just the financial sector. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say the other part, which I can get a little right more Because right now, let explicit. me just tell our viewers, right now, Goldman, J.P. Morgan, Citi, Bank of America, all are lower. Those are the big money center banks. I don't know what the, uh, the regionals are doing. Maybe we can flip over to that. But the fact is that I would have thought that higher rates are positives for banks. Here are the regionals. We only have State Street higher. Yours is, PNC is down about a percent. I mean, what's going on here? And, and how are investors supposed to look through all of this. Well, I think it was what we were talking about earlier, which is the expectations were that you might even see uh, that the median hikes for the year might go up to four. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think coming off those expectations, I think that's what it's about. Uh -huh. um, but at the end of the day, we still think rates are going higher, which is going to benefit the financials overall. Ward, Bill, great to have both of you. Thank you so much. And, and it's a fast-moving market. And I, I do want to just clarify one thing. The 10-year yield has plummeted nine basis points not just seven basis points. It started trending lower and then boom, it, you know, the, the, the floor fell out of those 10-year yields. Right